Hi, I'm Steve from Spire Agile, and this is the Agile Gardener. And this is a companion video for my Agile forecasting with Monte Carlo simulation up on screen now. So check that out if you haven't already. In that video, I show you how to get your cycle time in order to understand how long it takes to deliver any single story, regardless of size, 85% of the time. And then using Monte Carlo simulation, which is where the magic happens, to forecast how long it takes to deliver any number of stories with the same 85% probability of it happening. Now this video shows you how to create the macro in Excel needed in order to run the Monte Carlo simulation thousands of times. And it's based on the Excel sheet I use in that video. Okay, let's get right into it. I'm going to be speeding the video up as we go, so you may want to pause at key points to review the code. This VBA code has been designed using two VBA modules. In the first part of this video, I show you how to create the macro to copy each individual random date for when our selected number of items will be completed. In this example, it's named sheet one, onto our random date results sheet, named sheet two. In the second part of the video, I will show you how to create the macro that will allow us to run the first macro as many times as needed to generate a good forecast. And finally, I'll show you how to create a control button on our data sheet so you can easily run the macro by clicking on it. The first step to working with VBA in Excel is to open the Visual Basic Editor. And there are three ways to do this. One, using a keyboard shortcut, which is the quickest and easiest. Two, using the Developer tab. And three, using the Worksheet tabs. I'll quickly go through each of these. The first way is the keyboard shortcuts, and they are, for Windows, just press Alt plus F11, and for Mac, just press Function Option F11, and this will load the VBA editor. The second way is using the Developer tab. If you're a Mac user, click the Excel tab at the top of the screen, choose the Preferences option, select the Ribbon and Toolbar option, check the box to the left of the Developer in the right column, and click Save. If you're a Windows user, Go to File, Options. In the Excel Options dialog box, click on the Customize Ribbon in the left pane. It will show the Customize the Ribbon options on the right. On the right, within the Main Tabs pane, check the Developer option, click OK. And this will allow the Developer tab to appear in the Ribbon in Excel. The third way is to use the Worksheet tabs. Go to any of the Worksheet tabs, right click and select View Code. And this works for both Mac and Windows. OK, let's start with our first macro. We first need to create a module in the module folder to store our macro. So right click on the module folder, select insert and click on module. To start a macro, you need to write sub plus the macro name. In this example, I'm naming this macro copy underscore cell two. Once you click enter, VBA will add the last line of the macro as n sub. This line will indicate to Excel when the macro is finished and then stop running the code. To start typing a VBA code, you first need to declare your variables. To declare a variable, we use the dim keyword. There are three naming rules you need to be aware of. You can't have spaces, you can't start with a numeric value, and you can't start with special characters such as a dot or exclamation mark. In this macro, I'll be declaring WR as a worksheet, so we can assign a specific sheet to this variable. So in this code, we assign the variable WR to sheet two and use it to access all of sheet two's properties. The next line is a standard line of code to stop the screen from flickering when the macro is running. On the next line, we're going to select sheet one, so we can select the cell F1, which is where the random date gets generated. We're going to copy this cell and then select sheet two and find the next blank cell in column A and paste the date and value into that cell. Then we're going to turn off the code that stops the screen from flickering. And the last line of the macro is n sub, as we mentioned earlier. Now let's continue with our second macro. We'll create this macro in a new module. So right click on the module folder, select insert and click on the module. Start by writing sub plus the macro name. In this example, I'm naming the macro run underscore macro. Once you click enter the last line of the code, n sub appears. Let's now declare our variable. So we write the dim keyword plus the name of the variable. For this macro, I'll name my variable run macro. When naming of variables, remember the naming rules that we mentioned before. We want the same line of code to stop the screen from flickering that we used in our previous module. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that line in here. In the next line of code, 
we will create an input box to allow the user to enter the number of times they want to run the macro. Next, we'll use the if function together with a for next loop to check the value entered in the input box is a numeric value and if true, then call and run our copy underscore cell two macro as many times as requested. Then we're gonna turn off the code that stops the screen from flickering. Lastly, we check that the last line of our macro is end sub. So that's it, we've created our macro. So now let's go back to Excel by clicking view and selecting Microsoft Excel. So now, how can we run our macro? So let's add a control button to our data sheet so you can easily run the macro when you click on it. Click on the developer tab. In the options that appear, click on button. Click anywhere on the worksheet. This will insert the button wherever you click and automatically open the assign macro dialog box. In the assign macro dialog box, you will see a list of the macros that you have in the workbook. Click the macro name that you want to assign to this button. In this example, I will click on macro named run underscore macro, which is the one we've just created. Then click OK. So now you can see the button on the screen which has the macro assigned to it. You can change the size by dragging out the corners and change the text by clicking inside the button. And that's it. You now have a way of running the Monte Carlo simulation in Excel thousands of times at the click of a button. OK, I hope that was helpful. So let me know your thoughts and comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.